Chapter 11. The reason for the excitement was a small orange cat. Walking with its back arch, the cat stared into each cage as if seeking the insults and threats flying her way, as though they gave her power. She stopped in front of Oscar's cage. Oscar did not bark. The cat licked her chest twice. Cat attack, she said, and gazed at Oscar, daring him to lunge. He didn't move. Flora was impressed. Clearly, Oscar was a born leader with too much self-control to carry on like a common barnyard dog. And here was someone else to talk with. She cleared her throat. The cat looked over. Hello, said Flora. Pleased to meet you. My name is Flora, and this is my new friend, Oscar. The cat walked around Flora, slowly viewing her from every angle. Nice chain you got there. What kind of joke is a pig anyway? You're like the mammal version of a frog. No hair, no claws, no horns, no attack weapons, and no defense. What is the point? How rude! And Flora wanted to tell this cat so, but she wanted her questions answered even more. So she said, maybe frogs have qualities that make up for not having other things. Pigs are known for their spirit. Spirit? Oh yeah, that makes up for everything. The orange cat walked in front of Flora's face and her huffy tail brushed Flora's nose. If you ever get attacked, you can lash out with your spirit. Flora wasn't sure what to do in the face of such unpleasantness. Still, she had so many questions. Are you part of the team? Team? The cat's back arched again. A cat is never part of a team. A cat is a team unto herself. A cat hardly knows the meaning of the word team. A cat looks down on. Oscar growled. It was very low and soft, but it stopped the cat from continuing. Never mind then, I am Sophia. Sophia is the sheriff of this dock. Sophia is the terror of mice, the killer of rats, and she works alone. By the way, have you seen any? Any what, Flora asked. Rats. No. That's right, this dock is a rat-free zone, thanks to weaponry that others can only dream of. Sophia flexed one set of claws. Have you heard of the killer instinct? Of course you have, and Sophia's reputation alone is enough to keep their vermin away. Flora hadn't heard of the killer instinct, but she didn't let on. If your work here is finished, perhaps they have work for you on the Explorer. You could be very useful. Oscar is a sled dog, and I, well, I am ready to help in any way I can on our adventure. Heavens no, said Sophia. I wouldn't be caught dead on a ship. Cats don't like going on adventures, taking orders, or crossing over water, she shuddered. Flora thought back to what put Luna in a good mood. Your fur looks very soft and clean. Sophia sat down, lifted a front paw, and licked it. Flora tried again. Maybe you could tell us what you've heard about the explorer and the crew. Sorry, Sophia wishes she could stay and chat, but she's gotta. Just then, a shadow fell on the company of three, and they looked up. A skinny boy had walked over to them. He glanced around, then sneaked a bit of bread and cheese out of his pocket and stuffed it into his mouth. Sophia rubbed up against his legs. He bent down and stroked her back. Sophia winked at Flora and arched herself into his hands. The boy looked at Oscar. Hello, big guy. He gently stroked the paw that was sticking out from under the door of the cage. Oscar put his head close to the wire and received a good scratch behind his ears, causing him to half close his eyes. Are you ready for an adventure? The boy asked. Oh, how Flora loved the word adventure, and how she wished those hands were scratching her ears. As if he could read her thoughts, the boy stood up and took a step over to where she sat. And a pig, he said, squatting next to her and running his hand down her back. Flora wasn't sure if she should lean on him the way Sophia did or just sit still. As his fingers scratched a spot behind her front leg, Flora collapsed on the ground and grunted in pleasure. A pig, a cat, and dogs. This ship is a zoo, said the boy. Sophia rubbed against him, not used to being ignored, and then jumped into the boy's arms, making him stand up and laugh. I bet you'd like to be my cat. Flora grunted again. This cat wasn't even going on the ship. She wished she could tell him that. Just then, the bell started ringing. Men hurried by stuffing last bites of sandwich into their mouths and wiping their hands on their pants. Hey, Aylric, someone yelled. The boy set Sophia down. Get your skinny behind over here and take these boxes to the hold. Nobody sells on this boat for free, you know. Flora felt her chest filling with pride. 
just as she thought they had an important job in mind for her. Nobody sailed for free. The boy scurried over to a pile of boxes and lifted one. It looked heavy. What's a hold, Flora asked. Bottom of the boat, said Oscar. That's where they put anything they don't want to think about until they need it. Aylrick staggered onto the ship through a dark doorway and out of sight. The three animals watched him go. Flora was afraid Sophia might decide to leave too. I think he liked you, she said. Sophia licked herself. No one can resist a cat. What's your secret? Too many secrets, sister. Sophia's tail twitched and she began to walk away. Wait, Flora called. Just one more. Sophia paused. Flora rushed on before the cat could change her mind. You've watched ships leave these docks before, right? Hundreds, said the cat. Then you probably can tell me why I am going on this ship. Do I have a job? What's my job? Oh, you have a job, said the cat. No extras here. On an expedition, everybody has a purpose. She turned to go, but some purposes are better than others. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Sheriff needs to be off on her rounds. Goodbye for now. Flora called after her, or forever. Sophia disappeared between two barrels. Well, said Flora to Oscar, she's kind of interesting and a little mysterious. Oscar raised his eyebrows and blinked. Pretty much suck up and all about herself, if you ask me. But she's a cat, so what are you going to do? Oscar, I want you to know if I can help you in any way, I would be a hard worker, a good team member, and I never complain. And in case they separate us, I don't get to talk to you. I want to say right now, good luck. Once again, Oscar looked Flora over. She couldn't be sure, but he seemed a little bit sad. Then he rested his head on his paws. You be careful. Sure, you too, Flora nodded. Thanks to Luna, she was ready to land on her feet. If only somebody would tell her about her job, it would make it a lot easier to prepare. After the hours of truck noises and a day of dock bustle, night floated down as soft and quiet as a bird's feather. All that could be heard was the gentle splashing of waves. Flora felt as though she might be the only one awake. She looked up in the clear night sky, and there they were. Stars. She had no idea there would be so many, and they doubled themselves by reflecting off the water. Some were bigger and brighter than others, and they almost blinked if one watched them long enough. Eyes watching over me, thought Flora. Her mind went back to her mother and brothers on the farm. For just a moment, she missed the cozy pig pen and her family. She imagined her brothers sleeping on one another for company. She hoped mother and Alfred were together again. Maybe Luna was looking up at the same stars. Flora wondered if her friend missed her at all. As she fell asleep, Flora thought of what Luna had told her about snow. She dreamed that Antarctic snow was falling. The team was struggling to move the sled forward. Paws were slipping. All around her, dogs were stumbling. Only one sled puller had any traction. The one with the hooves. Hike. Chapter 12. Load up the dogs. Move it. You there. Be of use or get out of the way. Flora woke to someone shouting and to bright sunlight. A moment later, she was being led toward the ship, the salty air tickling her nose. Bye, Oscar, she called over her shoulder. See you on board. She was so happy to be truly starting her adventure. She could put up with anything, even the sailor's rough tug on the chain around her neck, as they went up and into the ship past rows of empty cages on either side, each with a soft-looking blanket. Which one was hers? Maybe her blanket would have a picture of a pig or a star on it. She kept stopping to look and sniff, but the sailor kept yanking her forward. She hoped he wouldn't shove her into a cage on the end. She enjoyed company, and if she had two friendly neighbors, she might be able to get sled pulling tips from them. They walked past the last cage on deck. Flora tried to turn around. There must be some mistake. But as she protested, the sailor dragged her through a dark doorway. A steep staircase stretched in front of her into the gloom below. This must be the hold. Why was he taking her there? What about her soft blanket? Her cage among the members of the dog team. Flora locked her legs and pulled back with all her strength, but she was forced to hop down each step behind her clanking chain. The shouting and banging from the world above got more and more muffled as she went down. At the bottom of the stairs, the sailor walked a few paces in and clipped her chain to a box. She didn't turn to watch as he clumped back up. 
She just listened. Then she was alone. Flora blinked. The only light in the hold came from the opening at the top of the stairs. Her chain clinked and her thoughts whirled as she looked for a blanket. There wasn't one. She slumped onto the hardwood floor and put her chain between her front hooves. Something rustled. She lifted her head and called softly. Hello? Nobody answered. The hold was where they put things they didn't want to think about until they needed them. That was what Oscar had said. Wait a minute, she wasn't a box of tools or a barrel of cheese. How long would it take them to realize she's been chained below by mistake? Oscar and the other sled dogs were up in the fresh air, so why wasn't she? She laid her head back down and tried to imagine what advice Luna would give her. Flora could hear her friend say, adventure quickly turns into trouble. Sighing, Flora tried to think more positively until a clatter distracted her. A sailor with a box in his arms pounded down the wooden stairs and behind him was another sailor and another. A long line of men darkened the doorway, each with a box or barrel or sack. She hopped up. She wanted to make it easy for someone to spot her. Each time their burden slammed onto the floor, Flora jumped. The supplies were rolled or shoved or tossed into place, and then the men banged up the stairs only to return with another load. They were all business and spoke only when they needed to. Captain says leave a path. Captain says stack them high, only too high. Strap down those barrels. There's rough seas between here and there. Captain says the precious cargo down here will be the difference between life and death once the expedition starts. Precious cargo? Maybe the captain would come down next and inspect his supplies and his pig. He sounded like a person who could sort this out. The parade of men finally ended without a single one of them noticing or speaking to her or scratching her head. The last man disappeared through the doorway and Flora was alone again. Was it possible? Could she be the precious cargo? Being put down here had to have something to do with being special. Or maybe it had to do with the training a sled pig needed. Yes, that was it. She would show the captain her best spirit when he came down to look things over. Not just boxes and barrels, but a special pig too.